it's already October and there are plenty of things to get done in the garden before our first frost. And I have a lot of timely gardening tips plus harvesting sweet potatoes. I love October lettuces because those cooler temperatures really make the lettuce more crisp and just so much more flavorful. They should be growing really strong at this point. If they're not, then go ahead and give them some liquid fertilizer. If you haven't got your lettuce in yet, you might still have time depending on where you live. We're in zone eight here and we have enough time that we can get it in for the next couple of weeks. I love the cut and come again varieties and I love the reds to grow through the winter here. And cut and come again just means you cut it, it regrows, and then you cut it again. And we'll get multiple cuttings through the winter time, especially if we put a light row cover over this. When cutting your cut and come again lettuces, make sure that you don't cut the stem because then it won't regrow. So you wanna cut about an inch, inch and a half, two inches above that stem just to ensure that it's gonna to continue to grow for you. October's a great time to thin out strawberries. If they're too thick, they won't perform as well. So take out the oldest of the plants and keep your newest, healthiest ones. Also, it's a great time to apply mulch and minerals. The minerals really sweeten those strawberries up for next year. Gaia Glacier Rock Dust is great, azomite and kelp. These all work perfectly for your strawberry plants. One of the things that we don't have to worry about harvesting right now are things like carrots and parsnips because the frost actually kills off the tops but makes the root themselves so much sweeter. And I'll store mine right in my garden beds all through the winter time. That way they don't take up any room in my root cellar and I can just harvest them as I need them, which is a really cool thing. You might be tempted to cut back your asparagus right now, but don't. It's probably too early if you've got a lot of greenery and the asparagus roots need that greenery to be able to put all of that energy down into its root system. You wanna wait until it's fully gone yellow or even brown. And when it's time to cut it back, cut it back to one to two inches above the soil level and then mulch it. That way it'll do much better come springtime. Even though the temperatures are starting to get cooler, the slugs and snail continue to ravage your greens. So be on the lookout and watch for edges being eaten and even look out at night to see if they're on the leaves themselves. And then you can just hand pick them off. During the daytime, you can water and that'll bring them up. Or you can just look around the base of your plants because they'll ravage these in no time. Another option to take care of them is just to sprinkle sluggo around them and that really annihilates them pretty quick. Another pest that can be really a nuisance in the fall time is the cabbage looper butterfly. The little white butterfly that flies around that's so pretty, but it's so destructive in the garden. It lays its eggs and then you get these little worms like this one right here, and they're pretty destructive. So you'll definitely wanna hand pick them off or you can spray a BT or a spinosad and that takes care of them really quick as well. You can also use a floating row cover and that really helps control them. Every few years we get a heavy infestation of grasshoppers and they really like to come in and eat things like our kale and our rutabagas and some of the herbs that we have around. And so as you can see here, they really cause some damage. What's been one of your biggest pests that you've had this year that's caused some grief for you? I've got a patch of rutabagas here that I planted in the end of June and they're starting to get ready, but I'm gonna hold off on harvesting these because they just taste so much better if they get a frost on them and they're getting a really nice size bulb on them. I can't wait to start roasting these up. October is a great time to be planting Brussels sprouts from transplants. When you plant them, make sure you amend your soil really well with some well-rotted compost and some nitrogen fertilizer because Brussels sprouts are just heavy feeders of nitrogen. As they grow, they'll develop the Brussels sprouts on their stem and you want to remove the leaves as they grow up so that it'll put more energy into those Brussels sprouts. October is really the last month that you can be sowing seed directly in the garden without any cover. I've planted spinach and mustard greens, hackerai turnips, and some radishes. As every little spot empties out, I put something else in its place. What's really great about October is the days are still warm and it makes those seeds just pop up so fast. It's been a matter of two days since I've planted this section here and I'm already starting to see some sprouts come up. 
Here we are at the end of the season for our basil and it's starting to decline a little bit. So we want to harvest everything that we can and utilize this. You can dry it or you can even make pesto and then freeze some of that pesto for the winter months. Now when I dry it, I really like it freeze dried more than I actually like it just in a regular air dryer. It just seems to keep that full flavor. But get as much as you can so that you'll have this wonderful freshness throughout the winter months. If you're getting value out of this video, then give us a thumbs up and don't forget to harvest that subscribe button. At the end of the season, a lot of your warm season crops start to decline and this is perfectly normal because the days are getting shorter and they're getting cooler at night. So with this bean right here, it's starting to decline and I want to save seed off of this. So I stopped harvesting it about two weeks ago and as you can see that it's starting to get full, a lot bigger than what we would normally eat. So I'll leave this on the vine until it totally dries and becomes really just dry and kind of like crispy and then it makes it really easy to harvest these seeds. So I'll have these for next year to plant or if I don't use them all I can actually just throw these in soups and they're excellent for that. When saving seed with most vegetables or even flowers you want them to completely develop to their full maturity and even just a little bit beyond because that's the time that your seed is going to be the best and if you want it to develop a little bit quicker then just cut back the water and that sends all that energy into that seed. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to really be watching the weather because our first average frost date is November 1st, coming up really quick. And so I want to make sure that I can get everything harvested and not have it all freeze. So I have all of these hot peppers and other peppers that I want to process. I'll take all of these red hot peppers and I'll make a lacto-fermented hot pepper. And if you want to see how to do that, you can go here. And you can take all of your other ones and you can roast them and freeze them. That way you have use of all of these peppers all winter long. If you haven't got your garlic in, then hurry up and get it in because you want it to get a nice root system before we have a freeze. And then make sure that you mulch it before we actually have that freeze. And another really awesome crop to be growing in the fall time is shallots. These are kind of like a little chef's delight. They're wonderful. They're a good replacement for onions and they're excellent for sauteing and putting in a lot of dishes. So definitely try shallots and they're pretty much grown the same way as garlic is. There's so many things changing in the garden in October, a lot of stuff coming out and a lot of stuff going in. And then there's stuff that we're just kind of waiting on like the horseradish here. So we want to wait until this dies back before we harvest it because all of that goodness is going to go right down into the roots once the tops die back. Then at that point, we can go ahead and pull it up and always save a little bit of the root for replanting for next year. A couple of my favorite plants that bloom in October that are pollinator friendly is this Mexican sage and the lion's ear that's 10 foot tall. One of the easiest vegetables that I really love is the sweet potatoes to grow in my garden. It is a root crop, but unlike other root vegetables, it's one that we actually need to get up before we have a frost because that's not going to sweeten them. If the vines end up freezing, it travels right into that sweet potato and actually ruins your entire crop. So we definitely want to get these up before our first frost. Once you get all of these vines removed, then you can start to see those sweet potatoes because they sort of lift up out of the soil as they grow. Once in a while, you'll have one that's a little bit deeper, but generally sweet potatoes are within the first 10 inches of that soil. So when we start to dig them, we want to be really careful. And I like to use a digging fork for this. So as I'm digging, I'll just use my hands to kind of sift through the soil a little bit, and then I can pull the sweet potatoes out as I go this way. Then I'll just put them into a colander carefully. Don't toss them because that causes them to bruise. And then again, they don't keep as long. Once I've basically sifted through the entire soil area where I planted them and I have all of my sweet potatoes ready, I'll wash them off carefully and then I'll lay them out for usually about a week to two weeks just so that they have a lot of airflow and they can dry. And that way they're going to keep better too and then they develop that creamy flavor that you really love with sweet potatoes. The best temperature to stir sweet potatoes is between 55 and 65 degrees. That will make them keep the longest. And also, lay them out in a single layer and make sure you check them often. Because if you have one go bad, it's kind of like a domino effect. The next one could go bad as well. So you want to remove them quickly. Once I have all of the sweet potatoes cleaned out of this area, it's time to put something else in its place. So I'll mend the soil with compost, add some nitrogen fertilizer, and plant more garlic, and shallots. Till next time, 
See ya. Are these sweet potatoes or yams? These are sweet potatoes. Yams have a rough, almost bark-like skin, and sweet potatoes have a smooth skin that's reddish brown. And sweet potatoes are more nutrient-dense with more fiber uh, and fewer stop calories. Your yammering.